Hello there. So a couple of days ago I got in the mail, finally, a battery. I wasn't sure what it was for, but it turned out to be for this iPod. I wasn't sure if it was for another iPod that I had. Um, and initially I was planning to work on the synthesizer, but because the battery came in, I've been wanting to get this device set up and running. This is an older iPod version 3. And I've always liked the iPod version 3 because it was such a strange iPod. It was the one with the buttons along the top. And this is a static, hard plastic case. There's no moving parts here at all. There's no click button. These don't click. It's just touch. So I always thought this was such an odd device. Um, I've always liked it. I always thought this could have been where iPods had, you know, the path that they took instead of the path they ended up taking. So, um, I mean, you know, I found this on, on eBay for about $30. Uh, not working at all. Doesn't turn on. Doesn't work. At all. And so I searched for a battery and I found this battery um, on Amazon. I don't know anything about the company. I'm not sure how good these batteries are. They may be good. They may be not too good. This may be a good old battery that was good and now is not good because it's been sitting for too long. But we will open this up and find out what's inside and see if we can get it working today. It may be more than battery. It may be something far worse. I mean, this could have been sitting in a puddle. I don't think so. There's no rust on the outside. Uh, this could have just been badly damaged. Maybe electricity shocked it. Who knows? So we will start today with doing this. However, before we get there, there is something I would like to discuss. Um, as you may know, I've been slowly working towards building a plastic injection machine. You may or may not know that. I've been collecting the pieces over the past few weeks, months, and I've been getting them bit by bit in the mail and putting them aside. So I have the thermal coupler or the thermal sensor. I have a couple of heating rings, melting rings, they look like this. They're collars that go around a cylinder to melt the plastic. And they also, and they also got the computer, the, the, the inter, interface device. All of these were very good prices. As you can see here. And this runs the machine. And the only thing missing now is another section for the frame and the uh, plug, the wall plug. Um, and then we can start building this machine, which will let me make copies of Sadly, Sal had an accident, but if I had made this, we could make copies of this. Um, if I had not broken him, he had... This fell on it. <laughs> and then that broke his head. So Sal sadly got broken. But, um... If we could make copies of things, I thought that would be useful. And then I could sell them on Etsy or something. And then it dawned on me that my mother was had been a silversmith goldsmith. She was a jeweler and she made jewelry. She made things like this piece here. This was a bolo tie for my dad that my mom made. It's all gemstones and fossilized egg, uh, fossilized wood and things like that from Arizona. These are all stones from Arizona. And she inlaid them in a cactus because we my dad was a my dad was a Danish cowboy. And uh, you know, he basically dressed like a cowboy and lived like a cowboy, but wasn't a cowboy. And loved Arizona. We'd been to Arizona together as a family. And he loved Johnny Cash. And this was his bolo tie forever. He wore this bolo tie for most of my life. Um, my mom made that very carefully. And she also made things like this Viking longship belt buckle, which she made for my dad. Um, and I personally love that. I'll never wear it. But I used to sit and make jewelry myself. I have made things like this, which is from the Book of Kells. Anybody who knows the Book of Kells will know that this is the Cairo, or Kai, from the Book of Kells. Um, I made this one myself. It's all very tarnished now. I had it cast. We cast it together. And had a mold made of it. I have a mold somewhere, and I could make more of these, I believe, if I can find the mold. And this is um, the Greek letter Chai, or it should be. It's a very fanciful version of it. But yeah, I made that uh, myself, carved it all, had it cast, 
And I made this piece as well. This was my trilobite. It's called a Terratetris grandis, I believe. Um, and I made this all myself. Um, the only things I didn't do was my mom inlaid um, amylite shell there. And she helped me hinge it. Because I didn't know soldering at the time. Or I guess it's welding when it's like this. I don't know. I guess it's soldering. Anyways, so I carved all of this trilobite and had it cast as well. And I think there's a mold made of this somewhere, but I, I don't know where it is. It's long gone. I could make another mold though, because I can now. So what I would like to do is start to make jewelry again. Um, you know, for a little bit of income for my family, I could start with something simple like making rings and making basic pendants and selling them on Etsy or I guess Amazon, I don't know. This is an unfinished version that was going to be a pin, not a, not a necklace. Okay. So if any of you are interested in seeing me make jewelry from scratch to finish, let me know. Um, it's something that I've resisted a lot because it was my mom's thing. That was her that was her territory, it was making jewelry. She did it for 45, 50, 60 years. And she was a, she was a master. She, everybody respected her for it. And uh, people came from all over the world to buy her jewelry. And so, um, and to have things repaired as well, because she repaired things as well as made things. And so I would like to honor that and continue it on, as my mom's no longer doing that, because she's not well. And so, um, that would be something I would like to do. And I could do wax injection now, once I get this machine built. So I was thinking, oh, I could make plastic things and sell them. And then I thought, wait a minute, I could make metal things and then sell them. I could make silver things and sell them. Copper and brass, not copper, brass and, and other metals. Um, and eventually maybe work my way up to gold. But at this stage, I could easily make uh, pendants and necklaces and what have you, not easily. I could, I could successfully make pendants and necklaces and things, and then make molds with silicon mold, and then do injection casting on them. It'll be a long process, and I won't really start uh, for probably till the spring, but we can make this machine and experiment with it, with wax casting. Do wax casts of maybe a figure or character, and then practice casting that wax into a metal version of it. A bronze figurine <laughs> of of sal <laughs> that'd be a bit intense having a bronze sal so that is that is another plan i would like to work on um it would be a good thing to do i think and it would actually bring some income i hope pardon me i'm going to take a quick drink of my coffee now meanwhile what i would like to do is get this done for today this is an easy thing to do we can do it it'll be quick I hope. And then we can see if this works or not. Put the battery in, give it a test. Most of these batteries come with a slight charge, unless of course this has been sitting for five years in a warehouse, which it might have. Um, it's sealed. No, it's not. Okay, so it's not sealed. That's hilarious. It's got the sealed tear tabs, but it's not sealed. Very good. Well, it's not sealed. But we can still um, Give it a go and replace the battery and see if this will function and maybe charge because I have the charge brick here and I'm hoping the charge brick works. I don't know. It may not work as well. And I have a charge cable for it as well that again the problem may not actually be this. The problem may be this and I have no way to know that but we will find out once I replace it with the battery that will give us a bit of an indicator on where the problem lies. Um, so let's open it up and take a look inside. Now some of this video I may fast forward through a bit if I start fumbling and mumbling more than usual. Then I will do some fast forwarding. Now I'll get my favorite tool, the dull blade. A super dull blade and a white cloth shirt. It's my favorite tool for this project. I'll take out a screwdriver because you never know. out my tweezers, my fine tweezers, and away we go. And I'm going to be
be super careful with this one because it is one that I do not want to damage. Whoops, I say dropping it. It's one that I do not want to damage. It is a very unusual iPod for me, anyways. You know, fundamentally the same, I believe, for opening. Looks about the same. Well, that came up very easily. Okay. There we go. First stage. Sorry, I was just checking the framing to make sure I'm in frame for the camera. Now this is being tough down here, so that's fine. We'll go around the top. And again, this razor blade is extremely dull. It won't cut much anymore because I've done all kinds of things to it to dull it. I mean, if I put enough pressure, I'm sure it could cut, but I won't do that. One thing I would like to do with this, even though it's a bit of a outlier for iPods, is I would like to use it once in a while. Go for a walk and have my iPod, this really strange iPod with me. You know, a bit of history. And I believe they were made in 2003. Yeah, there's a number on here, 2003, was when this one was patented, or copywritten, or patented. Move that somewhere safer. I don't want to cut it by accident and drop a knife on it. Getting there. It's funny, once you open one of these, for those of you playing along at home, it gets easier for the other ones get more familiar with what you should be hearing and feeling because it is a lot of sensory <laughs> feeling you can feel when something is not quite right with your fingers and you can hear it and these are really old-fashioned clips I mean they're like they're actual clips isn't that fascinating? Okay, sorry, they're not like the other one. The other one have metal things that inter interlocked with each other, whereas these are actual clips. And I don't remember where this came from, but it'll come in handy. I just found it over there. Okay. There we go. Now, possibly for the first time since 2003, here is the inside of the iPod. Hey, look at the size of that hard drive. Wow. Okay, let's take a look. Here is a 10 gigabyte hard drive from 2003. Here is, three years later, 2005, the 30 gig hard drive. Look at the difference. Wow, they really shrank them down. And the interface is really very different. This is a much wider cable for that. Oh, and there's a loose screw. Uh, okay. Okay, there's a loose screw here. And that loose screw came from the hard drive. So this hard drive has a screw out. That's not good. And it's sticky. Gross. There's the battery. There's the battery. Do you see it? Black square. So 
So I'm going to very delicately try to open up this with the battery. Now, I do have a plan that if this hard drive is dead, which it could very well be you now that I find a screw, lo a screw loose right here. And this is really sticky. Um, I could replace the hard drive with an SSD drive. And I might do that. I might do that, because something tells me this hard drive is also not working. But if we can just get the OS booted up, get it, get the motherboard working, that'll be a good thing. That'll be very good. Because then it says that the device works. However, there's a lot of oxidation. So look here. Down here, there's a copper, a copper pad, a very large copper pad where my thumb is. And it's green now. That suggests to me that it is oxidized. Sorry about that, my camera just beeped. It went beep and stopped. So, um, yeah, so down here there's a pad and it's oxidized. That's not good. The hard drive just popped out of its connector, which is fine. That's actually not broken. So we're going to put that aside, and now we're going to look for where the hard drive goes. I mean the battery. Where's the battery plug-in? So if we look at the plug for the new battery, I would like to think that's it there, but that's a different size plug than this one. So let's take this out and take a look. Yeah, that's it. Yuck. Definitely syrup on this machine. So I may pause the camera and get some alcohol and give this a good cleaning as well. I must say that the battery's not distended at all. And this is the original battery. This says 2003 on it. 2003-1203A. Now let's compare notes on these batteries. They look exactly the same other than the clip. No, the clip is almost good. Okay. Let's not confuse them. And they're both RUS 616-0159. Six, wow, they're... Okay, this is an actual, this is an official iPod battery. This is not an aftermarket battery. Well, that's interesting. I don't know what to make with that. That, that is, um, that is unusual. And this here is a, a ribbon cable. I've got to be very delicate with that. Um, so we have to be careful with that. Now, there is something sticky in this machine. It's, it's here, and it's elsewhere, and I don't think it's going to cause any problems, so I could leave it. But that is two machines I've had open, both of which have had a mystery, <laughs> a mystery sticky thing inside. Don't know what to make of that. But, yeah, we're going to... Um, Oh wow, and a TI, a Texas Instrument chip. There's a Texas Instrument chip. There's the, there's a MP3 chip or something. It's got a musical note on that chip there. That chip has a musical note on it, so that might be a proprietary Apple chip, and that's a Texas Instruments chip. So at this stage, Apple was sourcing out to, to, to Texas Instruments for some of their stuff. So that's quite neat. That one I can't read. And I don't know what that one does. So, other than that mystery stuff, everything looks clean. You know, 
um, and the hard drive does have a missing screw. Really kind of worried about that. But it does look okay otherwise. And this, what I thought was silicon, is degrading. This is not silicon, I guess, it's actual rubber. And it's getting that weirdness that rubber gets after a while. So, that's too bad. It's getting kind of weird. But I am going to clean that with alcohol, so pardon me while I pause the camera. Okay. So again, this is 90% alcohol. Never opened. alcohol actually. Then we'll give this a quick wipe, wipe down. Most of the weirdness is on this, not on not on the machine itself. I don't think. Careful, very delicate. And there's oh, there's rust. Water got in here. Could be just atmospheric humidity, but there is a what looks like a sink, a crystal sink or something, a timing, a timing element. And it has a bit of surface rust, and I'm not going to touch that with alcohol. Could very well be water got in. Yeah, and there's something down here that could look like rust. That's fine. It's not a lot. Boy, is it ever determined to stay on, though. It's a bit like coffee, actually. So if you're interested in seeing me make jewelry, and I'll go through the process of making jewelry. Because again, I grew up around that. That was my house. My house did that. We, we did, my mom did jewelry and I was exposed to it all my life. And if that's something that should interest you, going through the stages of making jewelry, let me know. I'll be happy to do that actually. I, I resisted it for most of my life. And I, I sort of thought, well, that's my mom's thing. That's, that's her. That's her thing. I don't want to, I don't want to go there. But, at this stage, I think I would like to do it. It's taken a while to come to that realization, but I think I would like to do it. Now I'm going to plug this in, and I'm not sure how to plug it in. Yeah, there we go. Plugged in. And I'm going to undo that Torx screw. I think I'm going to undo it. Let me get my screwdrivers. Oh, that was very easy. So the cable is not long enough to do that, but it's too long to do this. Let's hope it closes with the cable there. No, it won't. Okay. How did they do that? These are thinner wires. Yeah, this is a shorter cable and thinner wires. Same exact battery though. Ugh, it is disgusting. I know it's not going to go back in, but I'm cleaning this. Yeah, I can't describe what this is. This is like handling maple syrup on, <laughs> on something. It's like it's covered in maple syrup. Okay. 
So what I might do is this. And I believe it looks a bit like somebody else has been in here. It's hard to tell. But it does look to me like somebody else has been in here. So what I'm going to do is something a bit un unusual. I'm going to pull this up and slide the cables along here, I hope. Flip the battery around like this. So, unfortunately, I tried to pull out this plug um, and it ripped the pads off of this flex cable, which is absolutely nasty. Okay, that is gross. There's a lot of oxidation on it. So it may have corroded quite a bit more than I realized. So there may be issues with this device. Um, that is a real shame. I can't solder that. So what I'm going to do is look up on the on, on the eBay's um, a new one of these, maybe a back panel and a new headphone jack and switch, because there is quite a bit of green in here. Wow, that looks a bit like mold, actually. Don't want to think of that. No, no, it's not mold. It's copper oxide. Thank goodness. There's copper oxide all over the place. That could just be high humidity, or something got in here and has corroded it quite a bit. So it might not even have been that I put a lot of pressure on it. I don't think I did. I tried to just unplug that and the ribbon snapped. Um, which is possibly what it was going to do anyways. It may be that it was going to do that anyways. So um, what I'm going to do, put the battery in, see if I can get it to turn on. It won't work with the headphone jack. That's fine. But then we will just see if it runs. Now, again, that has a fair bit of surface rust on it. You see there? That's a lot of humidity, I think, has been in here. Um, and that would be the crystal timer, I believe. But I don't really know. And this up here did break. That is unfortunate. But there is an awful lot of oxidation. Yeah, even the torque screw is kind of looking different up there. So it could be water got in. But I don't see much water damage. I don't see a whole lot of water damage. So maybe that syrup actually ended up protecting it as well. Because even down here, it looks okay. Alright, so let's put the hard drive in. Let's put that screw back into the hard drive. Where'd that screw go? I may pause the camera while I look for the missing screw. Ugh. Oh, there it is. And it's a tiny, tiny, tiny Torx. Nope, this is not small enough. It's 
not fitting any of my screwdrivers. Well, let's try an inappropriate screwdriver. Well, that worked, and that's not the right screwdriver. So something very strange with the camera. The battery died even though it says that the battery is more than half charged. It's telling me the battery is more than half charged. Please replace the battery. And then it keeps shutting off. So this is the third time. We'll see how it goes. I hope it works. Um, I'm about to wrap this up anyways. Here we are. This cable ripped off when I was trying to unplug that in the hopes to avoid ripping it off. And then I discovered a fair bit of oxidation on the copper. Still some there. So that suggests to me that the pads were starting to get eaten away because I really didn't put a whole lot of pressure on it when I ripped it off. That's going to be a challenge to try to fix. I'm not sure how to fix that. Um, except I could try to order a new back with top off of Amazon, uh, eBay. Or order another one of these and try to Frankenstein them together. The fact that I see strange stuff down at the bottom of the tray here, and the fact that there was a lot of copper oxide up here, suggests to me that there was some water damage. Just making sure it's recording. Um, however, we're going to go ahead with this as if we can get it working. And if you see in here, that green is copper oxide. That's a fair bit of copper oxide. Now, that also shows me that they, did, they used uncoated copper in here. A little bit odd for Apple to do that. Um, I'm just going to try to wipe it off. That is not mold. That is actually copper being exposed to oxygen. Or wet. Water. Not a great thing to have inside your iPod, but I mean, who knows where this has been? This might have been all over the world. This might have been a well-traveled iPod. Anywho, we're going to go forward and put it back together and try to just act as if it will work, and then we will see if it will work. I think that is a fair plan. What do you folks think? And then if it really doesn't work, we'll take it to the next stage of trying to troubleshoot it. And that is the risk of buying things off eBay. You never know where they've been. Uh, that is actually a genuine risk. Uh, it's always a bit of a I'm not sure what I'm going to get situation. It feels like it should be the right screwdriver. But it's not. There we go. Now, battery in. Oop, hard drive. I guess that'll work. This is really disgusting. I'll leave it for now. <laughs> but it does worry me that water got in. Okay. Now let's try to turn it... Oh, we can't. I bet you we can't turn it on without that switch. But we can't turn it on at all. Yeah, there's a fair bit of oxidation on these pads. And that just sheared right off. Oh well, that's a shame. Well, for now... We can't even really test this. But we can plug it in. So let's try plugging it in to see if it'll get power. Oh wow, it just booted itself up. So it works. And the hard drive's not clicking, so this hard drive works too. Wow, it just turned itself on. Get out, it actually is very low power, but it works. 
get out. I never would have thought. Get out. What's on here? Christmas songs. Jazzy iPod collection. On the go one, on the go two, on the go... Ever Levine. Emery, one thing. 2K featuring Fabo. Beyonce. <laughs> Black Eyed Peas. Ag Christina Aguilera. Gavin DeGrow. Jesse Simpson. John Legend. I don't know. Kelly Clarkson. Kanye West. Wow, Kanye West. Lil Kim. So, whoever this fellow was, or lady, possibly. Hang on, how do we do this? They had a wide range. Okay, 98 degrees. Aerosmith. I may not format this one. I may keep it. Ashley Simpson. When song is selected, press and hold the center button to add it to the on the go. Now the light's not on. I don't see any light up. So the backlight is gone, I guess. Get out. This thing works. So let's charge it in and plug it in and see if we can charge it. Let's see if the charge cable actually does that. Yeah, the charge cable seems to be charging. So this is a good charge cable and a good charge pack. Sadly, I broke the uh, ribbon cable. I broke the ribbon cable in an effort to not break the ribbon cable. That's a sad situation, really. Because otherwise this would be a working iPod, minus the backlight. I guess the backlight's not working. Unless there's a light sensor. Maybe it detects light and then it'll turn on when there's low light or something. Okay. You're not charging, are you? No, I Plug that in, leave it be. Whoop. Plug that in, leave it be. And see how long it takes to charge if it's really charging at all. I don't see the charge lightning symbol, but that might not be on these earlier iPods because that battery symbol is getting bigger. So yay, dead battery. We'll put that aside for now. So thank you for watching this. Next time we uh, get together, I will look into fixing the snowblower again. The belt is worn out. I had my engine guy look at the snowblower and he said the only thing wrong with it is the belt is a bit loose. It does blow snow. Um, there's a video of me re repainting the shroud, the snow shroud. Um, but the thing runs really well. It blows snow and does all the things that a snowblower should do. However, it makes a hideous noise. And so I asked my engine guy down the street, who's an engine expert, he works on Caterpillar engines and lawnmower engines and everything in between, and big machinery engines and small engines, tractor engines, and he said it's just a loose belt that needs to be replaced. <clears throat> but it turns out that the belt is really hard to get to, because they put the gears around the belt, and so that means I have to take things apart to get to the belt. It's not a simple replacement. So that will be the next video. And then after that, we may get into assembling this because I only have one or two parts left to order for it. And then we can make, we can experiment with plastic injection and maybe do a copy of something and then learn how to do that. Maybe melt down some of these plastics left over. So thank you for tuning in. Uh, if you want to see this channel go towards making jewelry, comment below. If you want to see more about iPod repairs, comment below.
and once again my camera turned off and if you want to see more about plastic injection molding and things like that comment below um, I will be doing those things here and there but if you want me to focus on something let me know and I will do that um, but yeah thank you for tuning in I'm really pleased this actually sort of works works better than I expected it's too bad I broke it for the ribbon cable but aside from that it really works well I'm gonna see if I can find another ribbon cable and I wouldn't mind this charging but it's not charging that is warm that is getting energy but this cable may not be a charge cable it may just be a data cable anyways thank you for tuning in and have a good week Merry Christmas so quickly the backlight does work I was uh, experimenting with it and I pushed these two buttons together and the backlight just turned on <laughs> and now it won't turn on um, hmm that's awkward there we go so I can't quite see it I don't know anyways the backlight does work isn't that pretty that's what I wanted to see so the backlight works fine everything works except for the damage I did to it and the fact that it won't charge which is probably indicating that this is not the appropriate charge cable this is just a data cable so I'm gonna have to order a firewire charge cable and a new headphone device thing connector anyways thank you for tuning in take care